And welcome inside Rio Tinto Stadium for our second semifinal game. The Highland Ran or the Highland Rugby team taking on Belmont Shore from California. And the winner of this game will play tomorrow night at 7.30 right here at Rio Tinto Stadium. And Comcast coverage is underway with the kickoff, and Highland will be starting out. Highland will reverse the field, the kick, and it should take a nice Highland bounce, and it does. Got a man given chase, and it will go all the way through the back of the end zone. And it'll be a throw-in for Belmont. Uh, they're going to bring this ball all the way back. That, so it's back to the original kick spot. Yeah, that is not very lucky for Highland because they kicked that ball deep into their territory. And so it rolled all the way into the back of the end zone. Belmont Shore is going to get the ball deep in Highland territory with a chance to score first. So, and Belmont did not come out here. We talked about earlier with Union. Union came out kind of deer in the headlights look on their face. Belmont did not. Now, Belmont feels every bit that they can play with Highland. They've got the size and the speed, and, you know, being the Polynesian culture, they know what to expect from the Polynesians on, on Highland's side. So this is going to be some fireworks. Yeah, they came out. They were not afraid. In fact, they only warmed up for about two to three minutes before this match started. And there's a loose on the scrum picked up by Belmont. Now coming to the, trying to work his way back, Highland trying to strip it away. And Highland may have come away with possession. I know it's kept here at Belmont. They're going to try to kick it deep inside of the zone. And it'll be taken by Belmont. Catching Highland, looking up at the ball and going up and getting it was number 10 for Belmont. And that's Matuani Ayosai. This is going to be a tough. Please bear with us. <laughs> Please. So you like to say just big M, but you don't get the luxury because a lot of times you have a lot of M's in our names here at the Polynesians. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Minute 45 seconds and counting here into the first half. Belmont, again, we mentioned with that kick from Highland going through the back, has really set Belmont up nicely here to start this match. So it is a, rug, it is a Highland scrum. And here's Highland going to try to angle this up the field, and it will go out of bounds. Nice job, at least trying to get it out of the deep in their own territory. Gave themselves a little bit of breathing room here. What's going to be interesting is to see force on force. Look at the size of Belmont's forwards. And when they go up against the forward pack of Highland, who's going to win? Who's going to win those scrums? Who's going to win at the breakdown in the ruck? This is going to determine who wins this game. We're going to see part of this, part of this game is going to be who keeps their head. Yes, it is. Yeah, there is the potential for a lot of flared tempers in this matchup. That ball's not straight. Bad pass. Now the winds have picked up here. And here is, I believe that's Hayne Mooley who just got dragged down, or pardon me, Bloomfield. And now quickly back. Highlands change into their whites. So Highlands in their white jerseys. And Belmont in the blue and gold. Penalty here against Belmont. So Highland has an opportunity to pin themselves, pin Belmont deep into their territory and get some points. They're going to try to angle this ball out. It should be a five-meter throw in, and it will be. This is game three today here on Friday. Again, this is a semifinal match, and the winner will go on to play Utah County United tomorrow at 7.30 for the national championship. Highland, the more storied rugby program in the United States, looking for their 20th national championship and they like to do it in their own backyard. And look at this scrum. They're pushing this. Near the try line for Highland. Yeah, now this is the power I was talking about. And they, they got, got the it. try. Now I don't know who to give it to, but it's a try for Highland at 345 here in the first half. Highland comes away with the try off a of scrum. Yeah. Now let's see who they gave the high five to. Might have been Levi Card. We'll have to grab the number, but it was a... Uh, it's so hard to see in those rolling malls yeah. <laughs> who touches the ball down. You know, that was just power on power. You know, these two teams fighting, and Highland had the drive, and they had more players in better positions and lower leverage, and they were able to push over and get that. That may have been Tavita Bloomfield. I might be wrong. One of our big fellows up front. We'll get that number as soon as he gets uh, turned around. But here's a conversion opportunity. This is going to be a tough one. This is a tough angle to pick up the conversion. And here's the kick, and it is, he got it. It's good. That try was scored by Arwaya Elkington. 
Oh, I guess, no, he did not get it. Missed the uh, signal there. So the conversion was not good. 5 nothing to lead the Highland. They're in five minutes here in the opening half. So Highland dodged a big bullet early. They sure did. Being pinned in their territory like that and to reverse the field and get a try out of it. Oh, oh. there's a pick kick landing it on the chops of a Belmont player. Now Belmont again, another opportunity because they now have possession. Looks like referee's going to call a knock on and give the scrum to, Bel to Belmont inside the 22 meter. Again, this is the second time. This is how the game started. It was the same thing. Yeah, almost the exact same field position. And Belmont came away with, didn't come with any points here early in the match. You know, an interesting thing about Belmont is they came in a day early. They, they reserved some condos up in Park City to get up in the even higher altitude to acclimate their players so that they could be ready for this tournament. And there's a kick forward. And so Highland again getting out of Belmont territory and Belmont unable to capitalize on opportunities for the second time here in this first half. And the possession will go back to Highland. And that kick went out on the full. That means it went out of bounds before touching the ground in the field of play. So when you do that in front of the 22 meter line, the ball goes back to where you kicked it. So now an opportunity here for Highland to get more points on the board. They already got the try early on off the scrum. So here's the line out. Now that should be a penalty should be here. A pulled him down to the top of the peak of that lift. There won't be anything. Here's a kick forward and it will See if they can kill it in the end zone. It's starting to take a sideways bounce, and it will roll through the back. So once again, <laughs> ball goes out of the back of the end zone. Ball comes all the way back. I'm actually surprised the referee let that go on that last lineup. It is absolutely illegal for you to pull a player down when he's in the air like that. It's a very dangerous play, and his main job is to protect these players, players on the yeah. field. I'd like to see a penalty called on that. I was going to say, on the aficionado, and you couldn't think that you could pull a guy down for being in – you know, mid of the air on top of you know, being held up by his teammates. That just, you know, that seems pretty obvious. Yeah, you know, it's like that in almost every sport, right? You, you just can't attack a player when he's in the air. He's exactly. defenseless. Exactly. So here comes Belmont. Trying to get to the outside and a mishandle on that pass. And Highland looking to get control. I think Belmont can retain control. And we'll see here now. I think they're going to give the ball back to Highland. Looks to me like he signaled initially for a knock-on, so that would be a scrum to Highland, and that's what he called. You know, it's hard to keep track of officials. They change their jersey colors. They sure do. Yeah, they want to make sure that they stand out far from <laughs> these other teams and their jersey colors. I don't think anybody's going to mistake them in that orange. No, I don't think so. <laughs> They're safe out there, that's they for are. certain. What is it, like a hunting vest? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Eight minutes here in the first half. And here comes Highland. Oh, nice shiftiness. And now pitching it tough. back. He has teammates there, and it's picked up here on the outside and brought down. What outstanding play from Highland. And here, come, here comes Highland. The outside, a nice job by Belmont's defense of getting out there. It seemed like Highland had the opportunity. And you've mentioned the passing in the first game, how sharp it is. Right. They're going to try to kick it forward. Got a teammate there giving chase. Look, he oh. pitches it back, and it's going to be another try for Highland. Arion and leaping in in the end zone for the try. What outstanding play. Josh Kosinski, his second try today between the two games. And that was that was a lot of fun. And Picking in what up fashion? You see that Superman <laughs> dive into the try zone. Now, that can be a dangerous thing to do, and I'm sure his coaches are going to give him an earful on that because as you land, you have the, op the option or possibility of knocking that ball on, and the score doesn't count. You know, so, but it was uh, good-looking, athletic, yep. <laughs> you know? And a lot right of fun. between the posts for an easy conversion. <laughs> <laughs> Waving to the crowd as he does it. And he knew he was just going to be able to walk right into the end zone for the try, <laughs> but he didn't take the walking option. No, he didn't. <laughs> Flying option. Doing it with some pizzazz, a little super fly action. And here is the conversion. Up and good, and Highland out quickly, 12 to nothing. You know, maybe we ought to change one of those banners from Fly Emirates to Fly Kaczynski. 
We should give the option. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so Highland, I tell you what, early on, you think Belmont, we talked about it earlier in the United game today, missed opportunities from Katie. Belmont's had two opportunities in this game with scrums and possession inside the 22-meter line and no points coming out of it. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what's going to get Belmont in trouble. It's their attitude. Belmont has the attitude, and they want to prove so much that they can play with Highland that they're headhunting. They're not keeping their eyes up. They're going in for the big hit to get the draw from the crowd, and Highland is just dancing around those hits and scoring. You know, it's, it's always talk about, it's called maintained aggression. Yes. You know, you got to be yeah. aggressive, but you have got to be able to control it because once you're over-aggressive, obviously bad things happen. That's where teams can take advantage of you. And that's one area where Larry Gelwix has worked so hard with his boys. He's had a ton of talent over the years, but he always has told them, hit the field with a hardened attitude, not a hard guy attitude. Oh, here's a missed opportunity. Here's an opportunity taken over by Belmont. The pass was errant. And now Belmont with an opportunity. And now you speak of Belmont. If we were to stay in the middle of this broadcast, here's an opportunity for them to really get themselves back on the ground, so to speak. Because right now they're playing at an elevated level where their feet are on the ground and an opportunity some points might settle them down a little bit. Points would be very, very beneficial for them right now. That's what they need. Once they get some points on the board, they are going to settle into their game a little bit more. We're near Elkington is down on the field with an injury, but he is back up. And we'll see if the trainers come out. If they come out and have to tend to him, we'll take a break. If not, we'll stay right here. And we will take a quick break as they, as they attend to Elkington. We'll step aside and we'll be back in just a moment. He seems a little gimpy. Let me, okay. And welcome back. Elkington is back up. A little ginger running around, seeing if he still has his shiftiness and elusiveness. <laughs> Wondering where he is. <laughs> He's very back easy and, to get your bell rung against uh, Belmont. It's very easy. Well, we, we keep talking about, especially between breaks, just how big Belmont is. But again, you, it's, you can be big and as town as you want to be if you're not teachable, coachable, and can apply what you know and what you can do. It really doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, very true words. You can have all the talent in the world. But without that discipline and coachability, you're never going to win. There's a kick. See if Highland trying to chase it down off the hands of a Belmont player, right back into the hands of a Highland rugby player, and that was Joshua Anderson coming with that. And here's a kick that will go out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Is it near the 22-meter line? That's going to be out on the full, so it's going to come back to where he kicked it. Because it landed without touching the ground. That's, That's right. right. He was in front of the 22-meter line, and it went out without touching the in play first. So I have a line out here for Belmont. We saw a kind of a flashy thing with Hyle we had not seen today where they went to lift the front man and then quickly switched and lifted a player behind them. You know, you've got to throw the defense off so that you can secure these line outs. And here comes Belmont. Man, Highland is so quick to the ball. Kaczynski is all over the field. Kaczynski is all over. And Belmont still keeping possession. And a nice pitch, and it's taken away by Highland. And a quick hand back, and this is Kaczynski. Kaczynski brought down. No, the ball was actually up further. Highland's able to, their passing is so interesting to see how they pass the ball. Because it is very sly, and it's, they deke it very well. Yeah, they are doing a great job disguising their looks, really keeping Belmont on their heels. Most of this game, you know, it seems like it's been played 50-50 in, in each person's territory, but Highland, with the chances they've had in Belmont's territory, have, have capitalized on it. We need to talk about the differences of offense, because if you're sitting here and watching this, you keep thinking, maybe I'm going to get the ball to the outside, where it rarely does get all the way to the outside coming down the sidelines. Is a lot of that because of where you want to line up on a try to be able to get to the middle of the field? Well, most of it is because of the transformation rugby has taken over the years. It used to be a backs game, and then it transferred into a forwards game where it's a lot of power rugby, crashing it up the middle, and then when you have the opportunity, why do you take it? So this is not, we're not going to see a whole lot of backs play. I think with these two teams where they both want to show each other who's stronger, we're going to see a lot of forward play. Whereas last game, United, we saw a lot of backs. Yeah. 
because it's interesting. You're trying to think of an offense. You sit there looking at it. It's like, well, reverse pivot, come back, you know, different things, and just understanding how the offense works in rugby. Oh, there's a pass knocked away by Belmont. Belmont with another opportunity coming across midfield. And bring it back for another knock on. Scrum to Highland. That is so tough, and you see things developing to come all the way back. Heartbreak for that player who thought he had an opportunity to put some points on the board for his team. Again, those opportunities start to begin to feel uh, snake bit a little bit. The good teams will capitalize on mistakes. They'll punish the other team for making mistakes. So here's Scrum to the Ram, or to Highland. Oh, the nice job by Belmont coming across. Now, Highland fans wanting an offside. But Belmont takes over possession. Not rolling away. The referee has called not rolling away on Highland's defense, so he's given the penalty to Belmont. What is that, not rolling away? Not rolling away. When a player is uh, tackling the ball carrier, he has to release the player, and he also has to get out of the way because you've got players coming in to form the ruck and try to maintain possession. So if you're laying in the way, you're prohibiting that. Okay. There's a kick from Highland trying to change possession. Only one man for Highland chasing. Oh, that was a nice move. <laughs> An ankle breaker coming down the side. Oh, and there's some power at the end of that for Belmont. And he stole the ball. Not only did he stand up and take that hit, but Kaczynski stole the ball. He says, I don't care how big you are, I'm going to take you on. And he pokes the ball from him in the process. Iosefi Makaele. What? <laughs> wow, that was amazing to see. F forgive me, I, I thought that was Kaczynski. We're here on the Belmont number 15. That was actually uh, Sean Harwood who took that hit, the little scrum half going up against a big <laughs> back. I told you, you had... Mika Ale coming at full force down the field. <laughs> first of all, the move that he put on when he first got the ball on Elkington, on Arawa Elkington, was just absolutely amazing. And here comes Belmont again. They're still in this game. Are they going to just capitalize some opportunities? Oh, what a move. And then he fakes the pitch, coming back to the middle of the field. The inside the 22-meter line, and then finally brought down. And you start to see Belmont maybe figuring some things out and getting their heads in the game. And now we'll have another penalty. Yeah, I think this is a situation where Belmont feels that their backs can outman Highland's backs. They're big, they're fast, and they are just punishing them right now. Move ball very effective. Now, again, we were 18 minutes Halftime is at 22.30. And now we'll have a, another penalty against another penalty. Highland. Referee's going to have a, a chat here. It is getting pretty heated. And, and just so you think, this is what Belmont wants. They want <laughs> to get the, the, the emotions rolling. You know, and Belmont comes from a rich tradition of rugby. They are the high school, U19 version, of what used to be a, a Super League team, the highest level you can get in men's rugby in the United States. Going to try to get the ball to the outside, a pitch outside, and rug or Highland right there, and they knock him out of bounds, and Highland will get the ball back. They pinned Tuya Sopo, so what Tuya Sopo against the sideline. What had happened here, even though he went out of bounds, before he went out of bounds, they had knocked the ball on. So the referee's going to take the first infraction, give the ball back to Highland in a scrum. 19-15 here in the first half. We only have maybe, again, about a minute or so of, uh, of official time, if you will. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot of stoppages here. This has been nonstop action. Yeah, Elkington had that injury early on, and it was only about a minute long. Oh, there's a block, but it picked up by Anderson immediately. Now, his foot was close to the line. or not it a sure call. Was. Anderson's lot, foot looked like it was on the line and nothing there. The official right there didn't call it. And we're still with Highland. And it's starting to get pretty testy everywhere we're looking. Smart play kicking it up the field. Highland dodged another huge bullet. Maka Ale will go pick it up at the five oh. meter line. That'll be a knock on and we'll go back to Highland. See, and here's what we're talking about. These mistakes. 
Highland made a few down here, but Belmont didn't capitalize. Now Belmont has made a mistake, and we'll see what Highland does with it. Uh, he, I think he was thinking about another big run. I think he was. Yeah, I think he was looking for Sean Harwood to see if he can run him over again. <laughs> Either that or he was going to put on some Barry Sanders moves once again. Because <laughs> you know, that was quite the juke that he put on early on on Elkington. I got a feeling Sean Harwood would say, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right, actually. He stood right in there. I, that was impressive because he, he took the blunt force of that. He did. And you're right. He had some moves out there. There's a scrum for Highland again, looking for an opportunity. The first try came off of a scrum. And quickly come to the outside. There's there a pitch back, and there is another try. And Elkington limps into the end zone for the try for Highland. He might be done for the rest of the day, but at least he gets five points in the doing. He could not push with that leg, and it's now a 17 and nothing lead for Highland. You know, and this was the player that was injured just a little while ago. He shook it off, see if he could still play. Limps into the try zone. I don't know if he's going to continue on this. If they want to save him for tomorrow, they may have to look at bringing on a reserve right yeah, now. Yeah, he's coming out. So, one we'll, era Elkington will be done for the remainder of the day. And, but he does so after getting a try in Belmont now. The type of team that they are, they're either going to fight back and try to get back in this game, or he's one of these teams where you can mentally take them out of the ball game and Highland could end up running away. Yeah, you know, what? I, I don't want to see Belmont hang their head on this. You know, I'd like to see them keep the fight up, and I believe they will because they have a very good structure over in California with the men's division all the way down to this. So I believe that they've come here for a reason. They're not going to give up. They're going to keep pushing. Here we are for the conversion, and that kick is good from Sam Brookham. Boy, he's consistent on the boot, isn't he? He certainly is, and that will be interesting. If Highland and United play in tomorrow, the conversion percentages are such in favor of Highland where you're missing point after point. If you're scored six tries, but you miss all six and they make them, that's a 12-point victory. That could determine the game. It really could come down to one conversion. As we saw earlier on in the season, Highland and United, the game was decided by one point. And Highland will get the ball back. They'll be taken at the 22-meter line. And quickly setting things up. We are now in the halftime, so we're into officials' time, a stoppage time, if you will, for Highland. We'll see how long the officials will keep this going. And there's a kick out. It'll be taken by Tuiasa Sopo. And it'll be a penalty. The referee didn't signal what the penalty was for. He just told Highland to get back. Uh, to me, it may have been offside. The pitch out to the back of hit. Highland, or pardon me, of Belmont. As you mentioned, that was a big hit. To stand up a player of that size. He didn't go to the ground, but it was a big hit to stop his momentum. And that'll be the first half of play. One and a half in the books, and it's Highland 19, Belmont 0. Belmont had opportunities and could not cash in, and Highland has certainly cashed in and now to a 19-point lead. We'll step aside and be back with our halftime thoughts right after this. And welcome into our broadcast position. I'm Dusty Lister, again with Mike Law. And Mike, uh, what an entertaining first half. We talked about opportunities missed last game with Katie and United. Certainly opportunities missed with Belmont. The story of the game is the, the missed opportunities, like you said, you know, the mistakes, it's how you capitalize on those mistakes that win you the games. The truly great teams will absolutely punish you for every mistake you've made, and we've seen Highland do that on Belmont Shore today. Both teams have made a fair amount of mistakes, but Highland has converted those into points. Belmont has not. We'll talk about coming into this. We talk about United getting into the championship game and Highland obviously being just up the road and the whole thing. And again, now you've got to match what they did, and Highland's been able to come in and play much more headsy than Belmont. They've kept their emotions about them. There have been penalties and mistakes, but they've been able to do so. And talk about, just for you, you played in national championship games. I did. What is it like being on the brink, ready to do it, especially if you're seeing a team that you want to play? It might have been Jesuit back in your day. Mm -hmm. You saw that they're already there, and you got to keep going. What's that like? You know, no matter how many times you're in the national championship, you always have nerves. You have to overcome those nerves. But when you settle down and play your game and do what your coach to do all year long, that takes over. And so what we're seeing here, I think, is a little bit of, uh, there's tremendous athletes on Belmont Shore, but I'm seeing a bit better skill set on Highland's team. And that's one thing that I experienced when I was playing. I played for Highland, and we had tremendous coaching when I played. And the skill set that they gave us put us ahead of other people. Plus, it's the conditioning. That's going to affect yeah. Belmont big time. 
Now let's get into who impressed you in the first half. Uh, the first half, John Kaczynski. That guy is all over the field. He has no fear when it comes to tackling these big Belmont players. <laughs> he says, I'm going to do it. And how about the hit Sean Harwood did? Oh, man, that was impressive. Yeah. It was certainly impressive. Again, our halftime score, Highland 19, Belmont Shore 0. We're going to step aside. We'll be back with second half kickoff right after this break. Welcome back inside Rio Tinto Stadium. We are set for the second half. Dusty Lister and Mike Law bringing you the action. Highland leading in this semifinal game over Belmont Shore, 19 to nothing. They're on the cusp of making it to the national championship where they will face their rival, Utah County, Utah County United, tomorrow evening, 7.30, right here at Rio Tinto. And all local fans can only hope for that. That'll be a treat. It should be a lot of fun. And here's Belmont. Now, we mentioned Belmont had opportunity after opportunity in that first half, couldn't do it. We will see, really, their character in this second half. I think so. We'll see if they fold it in or if they come out to fight. And is he moving the ball very sharply? Off sides here. So they're going to bring the ball all the way back to where the kick was taken. You know, in coaching, I know our kids, kids I've coached, you can have all the pep talks you want. And as soon as the first moment adversity comes, that's where you really learn about what they're going to do. Because they're going to come out, they're going to do everything their coach talked about. And as soon as that first moment adversity comes, then you'll see if it's taken or not. Yeah, you know, and rugby is a unique sport with being player-centered rather than coach-centered. In football, the coach is telling you what to do every second of the game. But in rugby, these players are free to make their own decisions. Anderson, that was a nice catch along the sideline for Anderson. Now quickly, Highland's going to try to switch this back. And here's a kick. And it's going to take a Highland bounce near the 22-meter line. I believe that's Makalele. Yeah, there's the guy with the moves. <laughs> kind of got caught down and tracked down from behind. He didn't have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity that time. He was just wasn't looking at Elkington. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to vote. Penalty here for, you, uh, for Highland. They have a good opportunity to pin Belmont down near the five-meter line, get a line out, and the score. And that ball stayed in bounds. Did it not? Did it go through the... We'll see it right here, five meters. Yeah, we're going to have a line out. Just underway here in the second half. Highland, they have capitalized. Every time they've been inside of Belmont territory, they have, more, they have certainly capitalized. Here and they go. Again. It's going to show their power. Now they'll pull it out. And here's the pitch. And trying to break tackles and in for the try. <laughs> Eric Pawnee. Or he might want to go by Melvin. So Melvin... Pawnee able to get in for the try, and Highland now pushes their lead to 24 to nothing here early in the second half. Now, that was quick. That really was. They strike quickly at the beginning of the second half. That was strong running, running through a couple of tacklers there. He was determined to get into the end zone and get some more distance between them and Belmont. Sam Brookham will come out for the conversion. When they took that out of the scrum. They were trying to push it forward. They pulled it out. It only took about two pitches. And then Pawnee dives in for the try. Yeah, this should be a, a makeable kick for Brookham. He's been 100% on the day so far. And Brookham puts it through. 26 to nothing, the lead for a Highland. I think we might start feeling the Highland fans starting to, to get going here. I think they're going to get a little bit giddy knowing that they're in the championship once again. That'll be the 20th year that they have not well actually more than that because they've taken second place a couple of times they've won the national championship 19 times as we mentioned 17 in the high school division then they created this u19 division where they've won it twice and they'll both those times against united they have yeah and here's highland once again most of their scores have been short really short distance goals or scores pardon me Oh, and mishandled on the outside. Oh, we get a little testy here on the near side with Anderson, but now back with Belmont. And we see if Belmont's been able to keep their wits about him and if Highlands going to be able to stay from being baited. Oh, and there Josh Anderson got his revenge. He got to tackle it. <laughs> and again, Highland just flies to the ball. Their defense has been really strong. They're not allowing very many one-on-one -on -one situations. 
I mean, it not matter how skilled you are or how shifty you are. If there's four jerseys there, it doesn't matter. That's right. You cannot have moves in a, in a one-meter distance that's going to get you out of that. That's right. And one of the more impressive things that Highland is doing is keeping their line. They're playing team defense, but they're not coming off sides, which you often see. We'll see what Belmont can do. Now, neither Utah team has given up a try this whole tournament. Referee is going to call a high tackle here. And quickly, here comes Highland. Back now across midfield stripe. You see that Belmont Shore didn't want any part of that. They could have taken that ball because it was out in the open. They didn't want to. All right, so he's giving the ball back to Belmont here. Another penalty for leaving your feet. Telling the Highland players you got to stay up on your feet. The, the, the game is meant to be played on your feet. Precipitation is starting to come down just a little bit here. But don't worry, we're inside door. We're indoors. Yeah, we're the lucky ones. <laughs> We've had a beautiful day so far. It has been gorgeous. It was a little overcast this morning, and it cleared up. But right now it's getting a little more overcast, a little wet. Showing us a little bit of what day two of tournament might bring us. <laughs> so you told me earlier today, and that was interesting to think what that's going to be like, especially get to that 7.30 game tomorrow, what that's going to be like. Joseph Ortiz to throw in the line out, and that was taken by Highland. Brookham got in there and took it away. There's a kick, and it will be filled just beyond the midfield. And again, trying to make some moves. Makaele finally brought down. And a ball taking away. I believe the Highland, no, they did not. Bill McGonagall, no, there's a steal by Highland. Uh, he's going to call that back for offsides. He was there just a little bit too quickly. Tana Afihaki saw the, the end zone and thought he was off. And Afiaki, we've not heard, we've not said his name a whole lot. They changed positions with him. Yeah, he shined in game one playing fullback. Here at the center position, he's had a little bit more quiet of a role. And again, here at Belmont, opportunity for Belmont. They're now driving near the 22 meter line. And I'll quickly pitch it out. And oh, they're making about one pass. Here we go, trying to get to the outside. Again, just one or two passes. Yeah, Belmont is pushing to draw in the defense and then swing it wide. They know that Highland is committing two or three guys to each tackle, which eventually is going to create an overlap. Talk about that movement, because you look at it and you say, well, why are you only making one pass? Why not make more passes? You think outside. You talk about the setup of what that takes as you're trying to make the defense shift and move. Right. See, Highland is committing two or three tacklers every single time because Belmont is running with such force. So what that does is when those two and three tacklers are together on one guy, that leaves two more Belmont guys open out, out wide. So if they keep doing that phase after phase, all the Highland defenders are drawn in and they should have an overlap out wide where they can score. Okay. Now we'll fix the scrum here. The official didn't like it. Now this second half seems a little bit longer, but we're only about seven minutes into it. A little bit different pace in this second half. I think we're seeing the effects of game number two for these boys in the second half, and they're getting a little bit more tired, a little bit more bruised and beat up. And here's Highland. They're going to kick it forward. Let's see who comes away with it on the chase. There are two Highland players there. He's going to try and kick it forward. Trying to kick it forward. Couldn't get it. Belmont picks it up. They're going to be pinned deep in their own territory, and Highland had a hand on it. Now coming away with Belmont. Now Belmont getting near the 22 meter line but it is Highland possession and here's Afiaki makes a move Afiaki driving to the five meter he makes a move what a move and that end of the try no it was taken away it wasn't controlled and now Belmont kicks it out the first time we've seen it Afiaki was tackled by Belmont he was unable to control the ball through the ground and Belmont clears it that is unfortunate this is exactly what we're talking about, how you have to secure the ball and touch it safely down onto the ground. That was an incredible move. I mean, <laughs> that, that guy's cool. ankles might be broken. <laughs> but, you know, what good is a move if you can't finish? You know, you really have to make sure to maintain possession. 
You got a bunch of Highland fans yelling, tell him to pick up his cleats. Because <laughs> that was a move at the five meter line. So they're at 31, 32 minute mark. The Highland fans still chirping about that move by Afiaki, but the truth of it is, the better play was made by Belmont yes, it inside was. the end zone. And again, slipping tackles. An opportunity there. Let's get a pitch to the outside. I believe this is Bloomfield trying to reverse his field. He finally brought down. And quickly, here's Anderson. Anderson dives. Did he get in? He did. Josh Anderson dives in for the try. It'll make it a tough conversion, but Anderson has been a he has played with a lot of heart all game long. And he, that was a deep dive, about two meters out when he dove in. Yeah, he sure is showing a lot of heart here. You know, it's easy to drift and, and step out of bounds in that, but he decided that he was going to take on those Belmont tacklers and just sacrifice his body for that try. And it's good because he got the glory for it. <laughs> Most certainly did. So Anderson gets in. Here comes a tough, 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 tough conversion. You know, Anderson's got quite a style, doesn't he, with that mullet and those purple shoes? <laughs> He's certainly a self-assured man, that is for <laughs> certain. I wouldn't be wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sam Brookham will Grew come up out. in a safe household. He most certainly did. He, <laughs> might, he must be the younger child as a way yeah. to get attention. But here comes Brookham. This will be a tough one. He's only missed one. It was about the same angle early on in the game. And he's not going to get that draw. That was straight down the fairway and not good enough. So that 31 to nothing. That's a tough kick. That's a really tough kick. You see pros all over the world who miss kicks like that yeah. because that's from the sideline so far out. Toughest kick you'll make. Well, the angle, and you got to get that bend in there, and just couldn't quite do it. But Highland will also get the ball back. We got about, pardon me, we have about 11 minutes left to play. And Highland will be celebrating. Oh, making some moves. This is Kaczynski. And Let's I'll see make if Josh Anderson gets another shot. He just might. They keep working to the outside. Going to try to make a move. Anderson stays behind. And Anderson knocked out of bounds inside, inside the 22-meter line. Great defense by the Belmont wing. He decided to slow play that, take on two defenders, and he did exactly what you're supposed to do. When the sideline play is an extra defender for you. It is. The sideline is the only thing on the field that never misses a tackle. <laughs> There's a line out. And again, the Highland nearly got in to disrupt that. And quickly, here comes Belmont. Oh, the ball popped free. The ball is loose inside the five meter line, picked up by Highland, and they get the try. No, Call they the didn't. They get the ball back to. Then they give it back to Belmont. That was close. That Belmont defender had to make a decision there. Do I play the man without the ball, which is illegal? You can't do that. Or do I let him run by me and score? I think he made the right decision. The ref overlooked it. So it'll be Belmont scrum. 35 minutes and about 20 seconds here in the second half. You hear some of the fans now commenting to Josh about his mullet. <laughs> but they're missing the shoes. Yeah, they're and look missing at, out on the shoes. Look at those shoes back there. Purple <laughs> on one guy, bright yellow on another. And uh, everybody's going to touch it down. This is going to be a five-meter scrum to Highland. Highland has another opportunity to put points on the board. And that's just a bad pass. Surprised, surprised he didn't just try to kick it out. But, again, that's a novice saying this stuff. Yeah, you know, he, maybe he just didn't trust that he would be able to connect with the ball. You can kick the ball off the ground. It's kind of a difficult thing to do with an oblong ball bouncing on there. Highland puts in one more point, one, one more try in conversion, and they've matched – their right. previous game total. And again, now inside of five meters. Highland looking for some more points. And now Belmont comes away with possession. Here's a kick to try to get it out of the territory, and it'll go out of bounds. We're going to see where they mark it. He might get close to the... About what, the 20... 
Yeah, 18. 18, now. 18 meters out from goal. They have an opportunity here to get this line out. I think Highland may try to keep this in its forward pack a little bit, try to push down and maybe score with a rolling maul. If they're not moving with their rolling maul, then they're going to swing it wide to their backs again and see if they can punch through some of those gaps Belmont's been giving them. Some substitutions coming in. I believe Tana Afiaki is the one that just came out. And I think Levi Card might be the other one. Sean Harwood gets a rest. So if you're Highland, you got to feel pretty good at the moment. Sure do, especially, <laughs> you know, I mean, not allowing a try in either game you played today. They'll no doubt take that same mentality into tomorrow's championship game against United. I think United is going to have a different opinion. <laughs> and they're going to say, you know what, we put up 96 points in the first day. You know, when you talk about some fireworks, tomorrow should have absolutely have fireworks. It will. It'll be a great event, 730 here at Rio Tinto. Right here, and again, your coverage will be right here on Comcast On Demand. And again, for DVD copies of these games, you can give us a call. Put that number there at the bottom, 801 897 3850. You'll be talking with myself, Dusty Litster, and be happy to get your rugby DVDs out to you. They're about $15 a piece, and I'd be more than happy to get these to you for the memories. Here's the line out controlled by Highland. Again, I'm trying to work it wide. Pitch it back, and again, handing it back. Highland again, setting up another opportunity, pitching it back. And then brought down, Anderson will pick up the loose ball and he'll go forward. Island player carrying a near was Dion Stevens. Again, trying to make some moves in the Belmont Shore defense right there, and they're going to hold him up. I believe this possession will stay here. Yeah, with a penalty Highland. here. So, probably going to see a quick tap, see if the Highland forwards can punch it in. I think what we're going to see here is we're going to see a couple of phases where the Highland forwards try to punch this in. If they don't get it on the first one, they'll try again. They're going to try to get it wide. They're going to make a move. Nothing there. Again, pitching it back. Belmont's there. Oh, Highland loses it. And it'll be picked up by Belmont just outside the five-meter line. And, and there's that rule of broadcasting again. As soon as you say something, <laughs> the teams make a liar out of you. So you do is why you don't talk about no hitters. Right. What are you calling a baseball game? <laughs> <Right>. Those <laughs> you pitchers call you up upset, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. And you don't, uh, you don't call tries before it happens. Uh, no. Mm. Here's a scrum for Belmont. No, pitch back. Oh, nearly got the pitch stolen. Maka Ele, only about his third touch since that barreling run earlier in the game. And I will say this, Mike, this has been a lot calmer than I thought it would be once this game started to stretch out a little bit. I got to credit both teams really keeping their heads. Now, I say that after talking about the jinxing uh. with about <laughs> six minutes of time left. Let's see what happens. <laughs> now, I think that both teams are doing a very good job of keeping their composure. It is very, it's easy to lose your head out there when you're losing by 31 points and you've come all this way. But they're doing a good job. I respect how they're playing. Highland took a the ball away and I'll give the ball back to Highland. Yeah, it looks like Belmont knocked it on. So Highland knocking on the door again. They have another opportunity. How many of these are is Belmont going to give them? Yeah, at some point if you're Belmont, you really want to get this ball and reverse the field, kick it out. Referee giving some last minute instruction, make sure that the scrum is set properly. And it'll be a Highland scrum. And here we go with Highland. Again, pitching to the outside, trying to get to the far of these wings. Oh, he fakes the pitch, comes back inside. Had a man there, may have gotten a try. Again, going to set things up for Highland. And again, getting close inside the five-meter line. They blow it dead, and they'll give the ball back to Belmont. Offsides on Highland. So Belmont has that, uh, that chance now where they can kick the ball out of here and get out of this mess that they find themselves in. Not much hope for Belmont at this point to win the game. I think they'd like to get some points on the board, though. They will. 
They most certainly would, and they kick that ball out of bounds. They'll be able to advance it beyond the 25-meter line. About the, I don't know, we call it about the 30? Yeah. Forty-one minutes and about five seconds here in the second half. Thirty-one nothing the lead for Highland. They steal the line out. Highland still putting their foot on the gas. <laughs> they have not let up. We said that earlier today as well. They just not let up at any opportunity. Oh, that's a big hit staying on his feet. The big fellow finally brought down from behind. And again, yeah. another quick hit. Now the referee has his hand out. He's playing advantage for this because the Belmont player played the ball on the ground. You cannot do that. Like we've said many times, the game is meant to be played on your feet. The Belmont player ripped the ball out of the Highlands player's hands and threw it back there. So the referee played advantage, blew for a penalty. Now it's going to be Highlands ball. They're going to elect to go for points with the penalty kick. We haven't seen a lot of these today either. Did in the earlier game with Jesuit. Earlier day had a couple penalty kicks, but really for the most part, we've been pretty penalty kick free. Yeah, yeah, we have. Which is what you like to see as a rugby fan. You want to see continuous game. You don't want to see a lot of stoppages because rugby is fast. It's in your face and it's nonstop, no timeouts. So we'll be setting up Brookham again, and this is certainly makeable for Brookham. Oh, he's missed two tries today, but or pardon me, conversions. Those were tough, and Brooklyn puts it up. Oh, off the post. Now that's a live ball. So playing it off the bounce is Belmont. Looks like yeah. Belmont's number eight is getting his temper flared a bit. He is. I think finally starting to sink in with him a little bit about what's going on and what's being lost at the moment. Belmont getting near the 22-meter line. This is a tough loss for Belmont because they've had an incredible season where they have skated through the Southern oh, California that was division. Big hit. That was a major. I think the referee is going to call a penalty on uh, 18 for Highland here. He came in to the tackle with a club. You can't come in with that club because it's the same motion as striking somebody with a punch. Yeah. And he got him hard. He sure did. You could hear it up here in the press box. Well, that was the big woo we heard from the crowd was from that same thing. We need to see if we can find the uh, numbers. They have so many number changes. Now, that was George Hay Mooley in the first game today. But again, they were whites. They weren't whites here. They were the blacks earlier today in the 11 o'clock game, or pardon me, the noon game. Yeah, I think what's happening here is they've given the warning to the wrong player. The coaches from the Highland sideline are yelling at the ref. He, he's not listening. Uh, but uh, these rosters, for these USA Rugby Championships, you have a 28-man roster. For a game, you get 23. And so that means your lineup can differ from game to game as long as you draw from that original 28. So the same players aren't wearing the same jerseys from one game to the next. So it is very hard for us to keep all the names straight. It certainly is, and it's hard for everybody to try to keep them straight as we're getting our rosters. And we've obviously got to thank everybody who's been helping us with rosters and everything they've done for us. We definitely do. USA Rugby has been tremendous. The tournament organizers and the Utah Rugby Union have been on their game. This is a well-run event. The pitch outside, and again, driving forward. Highland all over the place. And you think Belmont tried to get the ball outside. They just not had opportunities. You see how many white jerseys are getting around that ball. They are smothering. And it's the way it's been all day today. And when you take both games into account, they have certainly allowed it to happen. Now, we are past official time. Or pardon me, the game time will now be an official time. We got a penalty here. Highland leaving their feet. So Highland will be in the national championship. That was a great offload for Belmont. And that ball's still loose. Belmont didn't notice it. There we go. We're going to get another warning from the referee on Highland's conduct. I think uh, this may be a situation where a yellow card is pulled out in the sin bin. And time does not carry over to the next game. No, it does not. If he got two sin bins, uh, two yellow cards in one game, he'd be done, done. for the entire tournament. 
And again, our numbers will be a little – I think that might have been George – Hey, Mooley, but yeah. we're not positive number about 23, that. Number 23, I believe it was. I remember the flailing hair from earlier today yes. with his different number on. <laughs> yes, now he and uh, Kenzie Tausunga really look alike. They could be brothers. They could be. And they're probably cousins. They are probably At least they're going to tell you they're cousins. <laughs> right. Oh, we <laughs> may get one more try out of Highland. Another opportunity from Highland. They got numbers, and here's the pitch. Anderson, and it goes out of bounds. We'll see if the officials end this match here. And they do. And the Highland defeats Belmont, 31 to nothing, convincingly taking care of Belmont. Highland will move on to the national championship. They will take on Utah County United, their rivals from the south. It'll be 7.30 here on Saturday. Of course, your coverage will be here on Comcast. And again, our final score, Highland 31, Belmont 0. We will step aside. We'll come back with our post game and our player of the game right after this. And welcome back in our broadcast position here at Rio Tinto Stadium. I'm Dusty Lister. Again, pleased to have been joined by Mike Law. Mike, what a terrific day of rugby we've seen. And we have exactly what we thought we would have. Highland versus Utah County United tomorrow in the championship. But let's talk about this game here. Highland absolutely dominant in a 31-0 win. I didn't see that coming. The way this game started, and it was so close back and forth, I thought Belmont was going to give them a much tougher game. But in the end, Highland's skill and their pace really won over. Now, when we look at this, we talk about skill and pace. Opportunities were given to Belmont early on. They had two scrums inside the 22-meter line to start both their possessions. were both deep inside of Highland territory, none of which could have availed to anything. And those opportunities, so those are the opportunities we talk about. They are, definitely. And Highland took advantage of every single one of those. They found the gaps that were there. Once Belmont made a mistake, Highland capitalized on it. And they put their foot on the gas, and they never let off. And we talk about foot on the gas. It's not just offensively, because they do score 31 points in this game. It is their defense. Their defense was spectacular this morning, Definitely. and it was absolutely outstanding in this game this afternoon. I think, actually, even though there's 31 points on the board, the defense was the highlight of that yeah. game. They had three to four guys tackling every single ball carrier. They stole the ball many times, and they didn't allow Belmont to get past the 22-meter line but a few times. They certainly did not. Now let's get to our player of the game. This is a tough one because a lot of players, as we've said for both games today, uh, have played very well, but who would be your player of the game? Well, in this one, it was very tough because they, they played so well as a team and everybody got involved. But in this one, I would have to give it to John Kaczynski. You know, his Superman try in the first <laughs> half is the one that <laughs> nailed it close for me. That was great. <laughs> it was spectacular, and that was one of the highlights of this game. And this has been a good first day here at the National Championship. Well, again, we want to remind you, all your coverage from the 2010 USA Rugby National Championship for the U19 division can be found only right here on Comcast On Demand. And all of our games will be available, DVD, and you can give us a call. We gave that number during the game. But also, again, it's 801 897 3850. Be more than happy to get you these DVDs for the memories. And again, congratulations to the Highland rugby team. Again, moving on to the national championship, looking for number 20, and they will play against Utah County United. For our counterman, Mike Christensen, for Mike Law, my, my partner, I'm Dusty Lister. So long from Rio Tinto Stadium.